Listen, thank you. Thank you very much for your help in the campaign and for coming out uh, today to Sumter. Um, this campaign has been going really well in the last uh, three. We've only been in this race for three and a half months. And it's been going much better, I think, than people uh, dreamed that it could go. And I think the reason is we're touching on issues that for too long have been ignored. And the issues that we're dealing with is why is the middle class continuing to disappear? That's good question. Very good, good question. question. Very good. Very good. Why is almost all of the new income and wealth generated in America going to the top 1%? Yes. Good, good question. question. Good, good question. question. Yes. Very good. Why do we have a campaign finance system that is literally, and I can't emphasize this point enough, all of you are familiar with the Citizens United Supreme Court decision. Oh, yes. 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 What it is basically doing is making the United States Congress um, employees of the billionaire class. That's right. True. Yeah. And it's saying, if you want to run for office, I'm going to give you a check. But you want to become governor of South Carolina? Here's a check for three hundred million dollars, and you work for me. That's right. Here's your agenda. Here's your consultant. That is not what democracy is supposed to be about. What the scientists are telling us is that climate change is real. It's already causing We've got a Republican Party that is rejecting science. We are seeing a situation, and I was just talking to the gentleman right here. I'm oh, sorry, again, your name is? Caesar McDyke. In the legislature. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Representative McDyke's in the legislature. We're talking about the high cost of college and student debt. Yeah. Now, why is it that in America we have hundreds of thousands of bright young people who can't afford to go to college? Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yeah. And then we have others who have graduated college deeply in debt, who are paying interest rates of 6, 8, 10 percent. Right. We need the best educated workforce in the world. We should be encouraging and making it easy for people to go to school, not discouraging it. Okay. And then we have all the race issues that we have to deal with, racial justice in the criminal justice system. We have more people in jail oh than any other country on earth. China is a country three times the size of the United States. It is a communist authoritarian country. How does it happen that we have more people in jail than China does? And a lot of reasons for that, but a lot of it has to do with a broken criminal justice system. It's not only that poverty breeds crime, that's problem number one, but problem number two is that you got kids who do dumb things, nonviolent things, who end up getting a criminal record. Once you get a criminal record, how do you go out and get a job? If you don't get a job, then you're going to do drugs or whatever the heck it is, right? And you got a perpetual vicious cycle there. And we got to deal with that issue. We got to deal with the issue, frankly, and I know it's a very serious issue here in South Carolina of holding police departments accountable, yes? Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Too many people, unarmed people, are being killed. Is that sure or not? Yes. yes. And we have got to now make sure that police officers and departments are held accountable. We have to demilitarize many local police departments. You know, when you look at television and you see some of these local police departments, they look like they're invading a country, yes. not doing local law enforcement. Right. Local law enforcement is protecting the people in the community, being part of the community, not being an oppressive force. I was mayor of the largest city in the state of Vermont for eight years. We moved toward what we call community policing, where the police department becomes part of the community. It looks like the community, where people have confidence in the local police, you know, to talk about the crack house or the drug dealers who are in the neighborhood with confidence. That's what police department should be, part of the community not an oppressor and somebody in the community that people fear. Right, we have work on that. So too many lives are being destroyed uh, by our criminal justice system, and we need some very fundamental changes on it. Who wants to say a word on criminal justice? We have a few minutes here. I'd love to hear from you. One of the things that I, I regret 
because I'm running all over the place and I just don't have the time to talk. Sir, please. Mass incarceration. We have three institutions of higher learning here in Sumter. The cost of incarcerating an inmate is greater than the cost of sending them to Marsh College, Central Carolina, or the University of South Carolina. That's right. Okay. And it's exactly right. I used to say Harvard University, and I don't know how much it costs to jail people here. <laughs> <laughs> and the cost of Harvard is going up too, so I don't know. But that's exactly the right point. And what I, let me just mention something too. It, 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 it doesn't, the media doesn't pick up on them. I asked the Economic Policy Institute, which is a economic think tank in Washington, to do a study. And the study I asked them to do was to determine youth unemployment in America. Okay? That means kids graduating high school between the ages of 17 and 20. Okay? Who has any idea? Now, this is kids who have no jobs, who have given up looking for work or working part-time when they want to work full-time. All right, so you're a 19-year-old kid, graduated high school. Who wants to guess what real unemployment is for those kids? What's the guess? All right, here's the answer. For white kids, White kids, 33%. Hispanic kids, 36%. African American kids, 51%. Do you even hear a discussion about this? I've been working with Congressman John Conyers of Michigan, and he and I introduced legislation that would put $5.5 billion into creating a million jobs for young people. To get to your point, if kids have a job, if kids are in school, the likelihood of them being arrested is much, much less. And it's cheaper and obviously much more important to give kids a chance rather than lock them up. Right. Your point, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Other thoughts, ma'am? Uh, I'm going to this and work with South Carolina. And the female, we pay all these costs to go to college. Same as the male, right? When we get a job, we want that same paycheck that our male kind of All right. Here, here. I'm retired now, so it's not going to happen for me. But, you know, she just spoke about her college. I wanted to have fun. <laughs> With her degree. All right. Women in America today make 78 cents on the dollar compared to men. That's got to change. And I'll be talking about that later. Thank you. Other thoughts? Stay on criminal, ma'am. Good morning, Senator. Thank you for coming to Sumter. We appreciate your visit here. Um, I want to comment on child support and find out your stance on this. There are many people in Sumter County alone, 87% of the people incarcerated for child support are African Americans, 13% uh, white Americans. And child support is very important, most definitely. And it is stringently uh, operated in all 50 states. The thing is that many men and some women are incarcerated for four months, six months, a year, many of whom are employed at the time of their arrest. They are carted off to jail from their jobs in handcuffs, and by the time they get out of jail, they have lost their jobs, unemployed, and some homeless. And so I want to uh, know what your stance is on this, and uh, what do you plan to do as president? to turn this thing around and to increase child um, support reforms. I, I, I got to, your point is well taken. What yes. your point is, I'm working, I'm paying child support. Mm -hmm. I get arrested, I go to jail, yes. I'm not paying child support. Right. And then it's going to be harder for me to get a job to continue yes. paying child support. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Tell me what you think is a good solution to that. Uh, one part of the solution, it's a multifaceted uh, uh, thing. The, the legislators are going to have to go back to the books and change some of the rules in reference to men and women who are delinquent in child support. Um, ability to pay. As you well know, uh, in 2011, the Supreme Court ruled on a South Carolina case, Turner versus Rogers, dealing with the same thing. Supreme Court said that the states must know that parents' ability to pay. Right. If that parent is unable to pay, then other choices must be taken. We are looking at community service, having people to go, go into the most indigent areas of good. the 
country or of their area, clean up those areas. Give those men and women at least one day of community service to pay back to the society what they owe and allow them to have real jobs and real homes. Got it. Thank you. Let me ask you this, and we don't have the time. It's a very interesting issue. I met with Reverend Jackson last week, and he raised this issue. And he said that there are towns and cities, picking up on your point maybe a little bit, where people get criminal records for kind of weird things yeah. and yeah. then are unable to pay yeah. the fines yeah. and it gets yeah. even worse. Yeah. Right. Who can talk to you? I was not all that familiar. It doesn't exist in my state. Yes, sir, please. Right here on the front page of uh, today's paper, South Carolina job rate drops. Okay. Sir? Representative O'Neill. Uh, I think that the issue that this young lady brought up is an important one. What I see in this issue is that what we have is, is akin to the old English poorhouse system, where if you don't have money and you can't pay this particular bill, you must go to jail. What struck me was that in the period from 2007 to 2013, during the worst economic crisis this country has gone through since the Depression, we saw the numbers of black men in particular incarcerated because of unemployment, who were not able to pay these bills, who were simply going to jail because they didn't have a job. All right, so you get pulled over, you're speeding, you got a fine for $200, you can't pay that fine, what happens? You go to jail. Is that true? Yes. 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 You now have a criminal record. Yes. 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 In South Carolina, we have more <laughs> felonies on the book. You can be a felon for almost anything in this state. Okay. Okay. That's a huge issue, is it not? It is. So this, this is creating the situation for non-violent crimes, people are developing criminal records, yes. can't pay the fine, yes. the situation gets worse and spirals yes. out of control. Yes. Right. All right, thanks. This is a big issue, right? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. It's an issue I honestly was not familiar with until I talked to the Reverend Jackson. Yep. Yeah. Well, what do we got from? Okay. There's one more. Yeah. Yep. What do we got? Yeah. Al. Go oh, good. Senator Sanders, uh, just real quick. Uh, you're a hero to me personally. I'm chairman of the Suffolk County Democratic Party, and I'm kind of responsible for making this happen. Thank you very uh, much. My wife and I own a trophy shop here in town. <laughs> <laughs> I, work at, uh, I also work at part-time at UPS because my governor refuses to allow us to have uh, health care, so I have to supplement that somehow, and uh, being a teamster makes that happen. And uh, so my wife and I wanted to present this to you and your wife because you guys are out there doing the hard work, and we appreciate your visit in Sumter. We thank you for your service and for leading the charge in the middle class. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank